Hi, I'm Jeff Brink and I'm with Blackout App. And today we are going over Asteras, how to set them up and the best settings that I use with them. We are here at Four Wall, which is a rental facility here in New Jersey. It's a very well organized, awesome machine. And I wanna give a shout out to John Velez who uh, hooked me up today. So the first thing that I do is I immediately open up the tablet and I see what version of the Estera app they're running. This one had a very outdated app. So the first thing that I do is get it connected to internet and I install that. While this is updating, I go ahead and take out the power supply and my Art7 box and I will go ahead and immediately plug this in to get this charging. And same thing with the tubes. If you aren't already, you make sure that uh, you're not leaving these connectors on the tubes. So make sure that you're not clamping on any of these wires. I've seen so many of these things damaged or bent before. It's always good practice to disconnect them when you close up the case. So now I got them charging. I got the R7 box charging. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this one on as well. That's also a long press. Now I can go ahead and open up the app. I will go up to these three tabs in the top right. I will go to uh, refresh connection. And this is going to ask me to pair with the box. So if I press okay, uh, now it's gonna search for the Astera box and it finds this one that ends in 402. And the way you double check that is you look on this little sticker that they give you right here, that that also ends in 402. So I know this is the right box. Now it's gonna ask me for the pin and the pin is also on that sticker. And now I'm connected to the Art7 box. If you're at a large rental facility like this, it is possible that you could be connecting to some other tubes. Uh, so the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I'm pairing with the tubes in my box and as you can see right here it's actually picked up not only tubes but it looks like some AX3s as well and an AX5. In order to kind of separate this kit away from any other rental items all you have to do you click the radio pin and you just change it so here I'm just going to put it to 10 and there you go I have a clean slate so now I just need to re-pair um, these lights with the Art7 box, which is a simple process. I'm just gonna go ahead and blue mode all of these. To get them into blue mode, once they're on, it's another long press and they will start flashing blue and then you can release. It's a single press to power off an Astera tube. So if you accidentally slip, then you could be powering off the Astera tube. You have to long press to get the Astera tube back online and then you have to long press again in order to blue mode them. So now that they are all blued, we can go ahead and through the app, pair our lights. You go up to the top right here, you click pair with lights. They're all blue, you press okay. And now the Art7 box is going to one by one search and find these lights. And it's going to set that radio pin to what is in the app. And what is in the app right now is 10. So all of these radio pins should now be 10. And once they are all paired, I can press a done. And if I go here, I will see my lights connected. So right now I actually only have seven. So I'm waiting for that eighth one to appear. Sometimes it's just a refresh. So you have to wait a little bit. Um, there you go. There's my eighth tube. So now I have control of every tube, as you see, here. You can either blue mode them like I showed you, or you can go directly into the menu of the tube and set the radio pin, and that will auto pair with the Art7 box that way. If you're on a location that's using maybe eight sets of these or something, line them all up, blue mode all of them, and then go with the transmitter and walk through them as it's pairing. In case you aren't aware, Astera tubes have two wireless chips in them. One is a Stara specific wireless chip that will connect directly with their Art7 box. And the other wireless chip is a CRMX receiver chip in it, the Timo chip, which you can connect directly to a CRMX transmitter, such as the AKS or this Art7 box also is a CRMX transmitter. 
and that can be a little bit confusing, but you would have to pair this essentially twice, once with the Astera protocol and once to the other wireless chip, which is CRMX, if you wanted to use this as a CRMX transmitter. Why would you do that? So that through this dongle, you can connect up your board um, and send it DMX directly into this box, and that would CRMX to the Asteras. So that's how that process works. What I want to do is I want to start getting them on my own system. So if I have a, a tubes, and a lot of times, the way I label things is I do everything at a hundred level, right? So if my sky panels are at 101 through 108, I have eight sky panels, my tubes might be in the 200 series. Tubes, 200 series. So 201 through 208 would be my first set of Asteras. Um, so if I just started up, and this one, this would be 201, this is 202, 203, 204, and so on. So as I'm checking these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually rename the light so that when I look here and it says, oh, 201, I know that is two, 201. And so I will take um, gaff tape and I will put it on here or a nice label with a label maker and I will write, you know, channel 201, channel 202. And that will correspond directly with what's in the app. Once I get all of my Asteras talking with the app, I wanna make sure they're up to date because it's gonna make a huge difference in terms of what profile I use as there's been some bugs in different profiles. So make sure you always have latest firmware running on your Astera tube. So to do that, you tap the top right button and you go into app settings. Here we will go into lights background update. Once you click that, you'll be able to see your list of fixtures that are paired with the app and you can click to update your lights. Now that I have all my Asteras in the app, talking with the app, uh, what I can do is reset them so that they all start on a clean playing field. If you go to the top right button, you click that, you go to actions for all lights, and I go reset lights, unpair CRMX. I make sure these are both yes and yes, and then I can go through and you just press enter on each tube to apply the changes. As you see, they all turn red. So now I know that these are all fresh tubes for me to play with. They're not paired to any transmitter for any reason, and I have a fresh configuration. So I can go ahead and press done. So now, if I want to address these, I can do this in two ways. One is I can select all the tubes and auto address them using the magic toolbar. The other way is doing it through the menu that I was just accessing. If I go ahead and click the top right button, and I go to uh, actions for all lights and I go to DMX configuration. I, I select my lamp type, which is gonna be the Titans. I can select the number of pixels, if I want strobe or not, the starting DMX address, the table, which is my profile. I personally love to use DIM CCT GM, which is green magenta, crossfade and RGB. I'll tell you why in a little bit, but I helped uh, Simon create these profiles um, for better film use, and this allows us to have tint control uh, of a tube with CCT. The input select, because I'm gonna use this with blackout or with a board, is gonna be CRMX. DMX failure, hold, you almost always want DMX failure to be hold because if you lose uh, signal, you don't want the tubes to, to go to blackout. The dimmer curve. This is kind of a debated topic. A lot of people I know use this in theater mode as they think they have a better low end control uh, of the fixture in theater mode, but you do lose some of the top end there. Uh, I personally use it in standard. It seems to be great for most things that, of what we're doing. The only case where you really want to make sure that this is set properly is if these are all in 16 pixel mode and you're running like a fire effect or a chase spec, you want that dimmer curve to be in fast. If you don't put that in fast, you're gonna get some laggy pixels as you are running your chase. And then the AC failure, most of the time you want to, this to be on ignore because if you have this tube on set and you pull the power, you don't want it to go to blackout. However, if you are at the end of a night and you have all of these installed and they are all powered and you want to save power on the batteries, a great way to do that is by putting the AC failure to blackout. This will allow you, once you shut off the breaker at the end of the night and all those Titans lose power, they will all go into blackout mode. 
that is the least amount of power it's using to kind of stay alive and you'll be able to come back in the next day and it'll only have lost a couple percent when they come back on. So the D DMX configurator is a great way to be able to address multiple kits of light. So if I have eight kits, the reason why I do it through the DMX configurator is because if I press send, most of the time, each kit is going to be a universe, or maybe I'll have four tubes into a universe or whatever kind of profile I'm using. Uh, I know there's going to be a repetition of lights that have the same DMX address. And this is a way that I can do this with. So if I have eight tubes and they're all in the app and they're all, you know, in this DMX configurator, as you see, they're all flashing. So whichever one that I press enter on, will get all of these settings, including the DMX address of one. So if every case was a universe, universe one, universe two, universe three, the DMX address for each one of those first tubes is gonna be the same, right? So I can go ahead and press enter. And that now has all of these settings with DMX address one. I would go to universe two, tube one, and I'd press enter on that one and so on and so forth. And I just did eight tubes all at once. Then I advance, I go plus seven, which is this profile, the next address for the next tube. And I would do this for tube two in each case. Oops, I gotta make sure I press send first so that it's pointed. And there you go, I would press tube two on universe two, tube two on universe three, and so on. And I would just go through my whole tube kit that way, and I would be able to quickly address any number of tubes, you know, 64 tubes in a matter of a couple minutes. Uh, it's a very quick way of doing this. If you just have one kit though, uh, a great way is by using the magic wand. So if I click and I hold this top button here, next to the light, they will all select. I can click the magic wand now, which has just appeared because I made that selection, and I can see all of my eight lights here. It's very similar to the DMX configurator in that I'm able to set all of these settings. Each time I make it though, it's going to automatically send that to the two. So right here, you see they're all in five hour mode. I like to put this, you know, at max so that in film, you always want the max light, but it's something that you and the gaffer and the DP kind of need to be aware of, the power output options for the tube because that is going to affect your intensity. They're all in max here. If I click this, I can set them all to CRMX mode right now, which is sending to the lights. I can set the pixels to one. I can set the strobe to none. And even though it's already selected, I do that again so that it confirms it to the tube uh, because they could be mixed up and it's just showing me, uh, you know, the value of the latest two. The table, I can go ahead and I can select my, my mode. DMX failure to hold, dimmer curve to standard, and then AC fail, I can do just as ignore for this, this set of Titans. Once that's all set, I can go ahead and auto address. And this is another quick way of doing the whole kit. So if I click auto address, and then I start address of one, I press done, and then I can see the preview of what uh, those values are gonna go to. This is correct, I press send, and now it's going to send that to all lights, and now that will auto address this whole kit for me. So that is a great way uh, to address the universe of, of Titans right there. This IR remote is actually incredibly useful and you can go ahead and power them off you can change them so right now if i just go ahead and power off look it i just pointed two clicks at all the tubes and they're all off and i can also power on this way so if i go ahead and power on now you can see how simple that was to get all the tubes up. And if you wanna just make sure that you have control, you can go ahead and try a different color. So for example, oh, it looks like I have one off. So if I go ahead and press on here, there we go. Those are coming up now. And now I got them all into orange. So now that was a quick and easy way using the IR remote to power everything on and power everything off. 
if you wanted to save batteries overnight or whatnot. So that is how I set up my Titans. As you can see, I have a very nice clean slate right here with eight Titans. They're all labeled according to the channels that are patched into my board. And uh, they all have the correct settings that I need them to have. They all right now say CRMX not paired. So the next time I press a pair button, a, a, a link button on a CRMX transmitter, such as a Rat Pack AKS or even this Astera box, it will go ahead and pair CRMX to that transmitter. So let's go ahead and do that with the, the Astera box. In order to get this into a CRMX mode, you have to plug in this 3.5 millimeter jack into the DMX port. Once I do that, this is going to switch to a transmitter mode. Now I can go ahead and press link and I will look on my app right here and I will see these go from not paired to no DMX. Now it just needs DMX in order for it to receive that. So now they are all paired to this box in two ways. One, through the radio pin, which is a stairs protocol. This is how you can make all these adjustments to the profile, you can flash the light, you can run effects through the light through their own protocol. It's also paired through CRMX with the same box, but it's a separate thing. If you have them fully powered and then you have them on max and your output power is at full, meaning you know from your console you're sending 100%, the Titans are not able to charge at the same time they are at that level. Meaning, after a couple hours, you may see some tubes dim in different orders because the charger is not able to, again, supply enough power to charge the battery at the same time as it is supplying output um, for the fixture at max percentage, max level. So in between takes, put them to like 50% or 10% and let that battery kind of catch up. These tubes are very particular about battery. If you're maintaining the battery properly, you'll get the best output and response from this. On the other end, you don't want them to run out as they are lithium ion batteries, you know, to zero. It's just not good for the fixture and they can, you know, really damage the battery. Hey guys, so now I wanna show you how you can super easily control these Asteras in blackout. You just go to patch. I'm gonna go to add fixtures. I'm gonna click Astera, go to my Titan tubes, and I'm just gonna have these in one pixel mode as I set them up. And here is my film mode that I like. I'm gonna patch these. I'm gonna do 201 through 208 at channel one, so they're all sequential. And I'm gonna put my batch label as Titans. These are going to go ahead and patch. And if I go to channel view now, and I go to 201 uh, at full. There's my light. And the way I can channel check these, remember, so if I did flash, so if I did 201, flash, flash, channel check at full, I press enter. Now I see uh, the first tube. And then if I go ahead and press next, goes to the next tube, next, 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 next. And there we go. Those are all of my Asteras. So now I can go ahead and s make my selection, record a group, group 201, I'll call these Titans, save. And now I have them easily selectable. I can turn them all on together. I can go to fixture controls, I can go ahead and uh, cross fade and change the color. So that is a quick and easy way to get up and running with your Asteras in blackout. For this, I was actually using the Moonlight as my transmitter. So I am Bluetooth to the Moonlight and CRMX from the Moonlight to my Asteras. And you can see it's actually quite responsive. So there you go. Hope you enjoy.